Hey, Elop on set from ksound.com. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about DAW integration. You already know about the MK3. I've talked about it before. I'm sure you already know by now. And the Control S Mark II version. You know that these devices now support DAW integration, right? But it's limited. It's only a certain amount of DAWs at the moment, but us Studio One users want to be able to take advantage of this. Unfortunately, we have to go extra steps to make this work, but it works because the machine can toggle between plug-in mode and a MIDI controller device. So basically you hit shift, MIDI, and we are in plug-in mode. And the only reason why we see this is because I'm in Studio One, I have a plug-in and I'm gonna show you the song that I was working on, blah, 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 right? But we have to switch between MIDI and plug-in mode because that's just what we have to do right now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just make sure you go into your external devices and you want to add a new device here. And we're going to go for Mackie and we're going to go for Control, right? And then what you want to do here is click on the Receive From and the Send To and look for Machine Mark III Virtual Input and, you know, do them for both of them. And you can't edit the name as of yet. You have to double click back in there and set the name. And that's pretty much how you do that. And that's just making sense of everything so you know what everything is. And so the next thing we'll have to do here is actually go to controller editor. If you don't have this installed, please visit your, your account and make sure you have this installed. And so the next thing we want to do here is go to factory templates and we're going to go for Mackie control, right? And the important step here is that we want to make sure that we select it on the, the control itself. So we're going to hit shift and we can toggle over to the template that we want, right? We obviously want to go for Mackie control and we see that. All right, boom. So now we should be able to control Studio One. Right? Stop. We can nudge or navigate to whatever section. And the cool thing about this is, well, you have to actually pay attention to the wording that pops up here. Um, but these different, this is our group section, right? But each group, represents different controls, you know, different things that you can do with the pads himself. Um, I'm not really familiar with how this all, you know, what, what everything or where everything is. You can definitely toggle between the different things going on at the top. And this is soloing. You know, like I say, you just kind of have to play around with it to gain an understanding where everything is. And you can toggle between these five groups. And they seem to all do something different. Or you can do the same thing up top. So you can select instruments. If you just toggle over to the right screen, this is my machine instrument or my Keyscape. And you just kind of go down the line or if I want to jump all the way over here, which is my complete, my string ensemble here, you can definitely do that. The other cool thing that I thought was pretty decent was if I toggle over to the right screen, I can see, and let me go to the next screen, I can actually mix on the fly here. So it's set up to automatically mix. So this thing turns into your mute, your solo, your your instrument selection or channel selection, and you can actually mix. And I'm gonna just kind of mix on the fly.
right? It's a little bit off right now because of the CPU right now is is just <laughs> going out of way. I got a lot going on on my computer. I have to update and whatever. Don't hold that against me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Yes, it is possible to utilize machine as a controller. And keep in mind, you know, we have to go through extra loops in order to make it work, but it works. You can still do it. And if I wanted to get back to the machine software here with the plugin inside of Studio One, simply go back here, hit shift. Again, like I was saying earlier, shift MIDI. And now we are back in the machine itself and we can control the parameters in regards to the plugin. And this has nothing to do with Studio One. You know, so if I hit play or start or what, you know, it, nothing is going to happen. The only thing that will happen is obviously the record button because that has always been what you was able to control while while this being a plugin inside of Studio One. And you can obviously the tap tempo, whatever. Actually, the tap tempo won't, won't do you any justice because your tap tempo and you know, just your tempo in general is being controlled by the master doll anyway. So, uh, you know, but you can still browse and do other things that you need to do. You just won't be able to start or stop. That's something I hope that Studio One and Native Instruments come together, personas and native native instruments, and come to a common ground and make it sweet for us Studio One users because this is something that you can all already do inside of Logic Pro. Able to live, Cubase, I think is new window, and I'm not sure if there's any others, but I'm pretty sure with this new design and the new the fact that you can do these type of things with the current dolls, I'm sure there will be some updates later on down the line and everything will come together full circle, y'all. But until then, we have to go this route, all right? So uh yeah. Make sure you visit the website artofsound.university my name is kevin ellip from ksound.com remember music is art you're the artist paint your picture uh. yeah case sound yeah ksound.com don't forget to visit us <laughs>